Fournette. Fournette goes airborne. He's in. Touchdown, Jaguars. Tip and intercepted by Ramsey to close it out. It's over. The Jacksonville Jaguars have pulled off the upset of the playoffs. What is going on, everybody? It is Tree from Dream Talks here, here to recap the week number 11 matchup between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Of course, last yesterday, last night, I did most of my recapping of the video, most of my rant, getting everything out of the way that I thought went bad, and a lot of it went bad. The first half was pretty good. Give that to the Jags. However, today, I think I'm just going to be doing position grades and players of the week. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I am Tree from BigJReport.com. This is the Jacksonville Jaguars versus Pittsburgh Steelers. Week number 11, position grades and players of the week. So, first and foremost, we're going to be starting off with these special teams as we do every single week. And starting things off with kicker Josh Lambeau. Josh Lambeau being the only consistent player on this Jaguar team. <clears throat> He's going to be getting an A on the day, making all of his field goals and all of his extra points. At one point, he was the only guy that had any points on the board. The Jaguars took a 9-0 lead early in this game because the offense was just so damn anemic and could not get anything done. So Josh Lambeau was really the saving grace uh, of the team, being able to put points up on the board he's made 26 or 27 straight field goals inside 50 yards so that is consistent he's one of the most consistent kickers in the league also today happens to be his birthday so everybody in the comment section go crazy say happy birthday to the best player that is currently on the Jaguars roster Josh Lambeau say hashtag happy birthday Josh Lambeau also he's the most handsome man on the team and I never fail to acknowledge that no homo Josh Lambeau you handsome man happy birthday and thanks for what you've done for the Jags this season being one of the only consistent pieces on this Jaguar team so an A for Josh Lambeau as for Logan Cook we are going to be giving him a C on the day there's a couple of times that Logan Cook did some good punts and he was able to pin him back pretty deep in uh as far as field position goes but as a whole he really struggled on the day knocking like 30 40 yard punts you know early in the season looking like a franchise punter but you know he's really showing that he is a rookie and it does take punters really like a long time to be able to be consistent i mean you look at the great punters in today's league and they're all over the age of 30 35 40 years old uh, Logan Cook's a rookie. He's just beginning, so I, I think it sees fair, and I really think Logan Cook does have a, a bright future as the Jaguars uh, punter going forward um, in his career as well. So, and the coverage team as a whole, they're gonna get a B plus as well. They were able to all the returnable punts. They were able to go down there and um, cover the ball really, really well. And they were able to do that consistently. DJ Chark has been one of the most consistent uh, special teams players going out there laying the lick. Almost looking like he should be playing defense instead of offense. Because his hitting skills might just be a little bit better uh, than his hands overall. So, coverage team as a whole, they are going to be getting a B plus on the day from me. Um, it's, it's a consistent group, you know, they're able to go down there. There's a lot of depth guys that go out there and play really good special teams ball. Of course, DJ Chark being one of them. Uh, Donald Payne as well. You know, guys that just go down there and make plays. I think our coverage team has, again, been one of the most consistent things about this Jaguar team. No one's been able to get a really big kick return or a punt return all season long. And it's pretty much thanks to this consistent play of the coverage team that the Jaguars currently have. So a B plus for them in every shape of the way, in my opinion, is more than fair. Now let's hop into the overall grade for the special teams. The special teams is going to be getting a B plus on the day. I'm not going to be taken away from Josh Lambeau and this coverage team and just to see that Logan Cook got to ruin their overall grade. I really think the coverage team and Josh Lambeau both did really, really well <clears throat> and did did good enough for the Jags uh, this week and this time around. Logan Cook does need to continue to improve, which I think he will. Like I said, later in his career, I think he will be a consistent punter and will be the Jaguars guy uh, moving forward in his career. But the coverage team and Josh Lambeau, uh, both very, very consistent 
for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's hop in to the offensive side of things. And there's a lot of good to be said about this offense, but there's also a lot of bad to be said on this offense as well. As for the offensive line, as we usually do, grading them first, they are going to be getting an F overall. I think in the first half and as far as run blocking goes, they did their job and they did it well. Um, but in the second half, they're facing eight, nine-man boxes. They can't really block everybody. You know, like I said, the last drive, the last four drives the Jaguars had <clears throat> in this game, they gained negative three yards total, which is not good. Not good at all. You know, you're going backwards. So I think the offensive line getting an F grade is more than fair. Every time Blake did drop back to pass, there was pressure in his face. They were able to open up run lanes, but we're going to get into that a little bit more why I don't think that's necessarily all the offensive line. I think it's more of a another key piece. But, um, you know, A.J. Can left with an injury. I think he ended up coming back, though. Um, Tyler Shatley had a lot of high snaps in this game, um, especially early on. When I was doing the live reactions, I found myself saying, uh, Blake Bortles gets the high snap, you know, more than – more than you should with a center and a quarterback relationship. I understand that he is a backup. He's not a starter. And, you know, he's coming in and, you know, trying to fill in for Brandon Linder, who's been a consistent uh, key piece to this Jaguars offensive line. However, overall, an F grade, I think, is <laughs> deserving, at least to say the least, because, like I said, there's pressure in Blake's face all game long only throwing 104 yards though that is partially Blake's fault I will agree the offensive line definitely did not do him any favors I think Blake got sacked on the day five six times and uh a lot of it was this offensive line's fault you know all of it's this offensive line's fault whenever a sack is given up uh sometimes Blake Bortles did make a little bit of a bad decision on how he decided to move up in the pocket and ended up getting sacked but still it comes from the offensive line the offensive line is viable so an F on the year for this offensive line uh, for the Jaguars now we're gonna be getting into why I think the run game really worked um, the tight ends the Jaguars currently have all three of them are very consistent and very good run blockers I uh, just got Ben Koyak back Ben Koyak's my guy uh, it was good to see him back in black and teal back on the field for the Jaguars um, James O'Shaughnessy as well as a proven run blocker and this Blake Bell kid man he has proved to be um, a solid pickup. The Jaguars actually just picked him up, not necessarily off the streets, but, you know, managed to get him on the practice squad, and he's seen a lot of time and a lot of reps. I think this is a guy that's going to end up being on the team next year as well, uh, not only as a tight end, but also in the special teams game. You know, he's a bulldozer when he catches the ball. He's also a really, really good blocker, you know, him and James O'Shaughnessy both, as well as Ben Koyak. The Jaguars currently have five uh, consistent tight ends, um, Austin Safarian Jenkins, of course, I mean four, sorry. Austin Safarian Jenkins, of course, coming in as the starter because he's the best pass catcher of the bunch. James O'Shaughnessy has showed the ability to catch the ball as well. Uh, so is Blake Bell, too. That's why I think Blake Bell uh, deserves a crack at this roster next year, and I think he will be able to get onto the roster also, if not as a you know consistent piece of the offense, even more so of a special teams guy. I think he deserves it. He's gone out there. He's done good. He's had a solid season. Um, thus far, and I think the tight ends are really responsible for how this run game did. Um, <clears throat> when there was a blitz, they were able to pick up that blitz and to seal the edge as well to uh, have Leonard Fournette get a two-way go. These tight ends did very, very good uh, in the blocking game. I don't think any of them had a reception, and I really don't think any of them had a lot of yards, and we'll get into that more why I don't think that as well when we start talking about the wide receivers. But these tight ends as a whole, I think a B is very fair uh, for a group that is not well known. <clears throat> it's very fair. They are playing consistent out there as far as blocking goes. And uh, they really opened up the run game this game. So this is the first time I've decided to give the tight ends a separate grade from the offensive line or the wide receivers uh, for good reasons. The offensive line got an F and the wide receivers will get into it in a little bit on why I didn't throw him in there. So the tight ends get a B on the day. Did really solid. And I really like this Blake Bell kid. I think that he's going to be something solid <clears throat> in the future. And I also think he could play the fullback position as well. You've seen it a couple of times uh, last last week. Um, I think Blake Bell was in there at fullback uh, quite a bit a couple of times. So, you know, <clears throat> the guy's a wrecking ball. 
you know, he goes out there, he does his job, and he does it well. So the tight ends on the day get a B from Treeb. And now let's dive into the wide receivers and why I decided not to consider the tight ends uh, in this group. The wide receivers get double question marks because the leading wide receiver was D.D. Westbrook. And you want to know how many rec- receiving receiving yards D.D. Westbrook had? 19. Our overall leading receiver was Leonard Fournette on the day with 46 yards. D.D. Westbrook is the only receiver that has more than one reception. He had two, and it was for 19 yards. And that is just not enough. That's not enough to for me to grade a wide receiver core because, you know, the guy only had two. There's no, like, crazy drops or anything to where they deserve a D or an F. Um, the pressure was in Blake Bortles' face, and Blake just couldn't get it outside the numbers, couldn't get it to the wide receivers. You know, he was overshooting guys, undershooting guys all day long. Uh, these wide receivers are just going to get double question marks from me. I believe that's the second time I've given that grade out uh, on the show. I think it's also very fair. Because, like I said, D.D. Westbrook, two catches for 19 yards, being the leading receiver, you're telling me that you that I have to grade that? No, I'm not. So the double question mark grade... For the wide receivers, that is also why. I didn't throw the tight ends in there. However, it probably would have helped their grade a little bit. And that's why I didn't throw the tight ends in the offensive line. Because the offensive line did really bad. So, that's why the tight ends are separate. Because the wideouts got a question mark grade. And the offensive line came in with an F grade. Now, let's talk about the running back position. In the second half, Leonard Fournette came in there. And, you know, he was tackled in the backfield consistently. Though that is not his fault, that's mostly that's all the fault of Nathaniel Hackett and his play calling. His play calling was so consistent. It was run, 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 run. Or no, sorry, run, 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 punt. Run, 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 punt. They had four straight three and outs. Um, <clears throat> they were on to us. Jaguars failed to make any second half adjustments on the offensive side of the ball. But these that's this three-headed monster the Jags have right now with Court, uh, Corey Grant, Carlos Hyde, uh, TJ Yeldon, and Leonard Fournette. They played extremely well. Leonard Fournette coming in with over 100 yards uh, all-purpose. TJ Yeldon came in, had a good game. Carlos Hyde as well, his best game as a Jaguar. Uh, he came in there and ran the ball well, and we actually gave him some much-deserved chances. So he went out there, did his thing. And uh, did well for the Jaguars in the running game. As for the quarterback position. Oh, by the way, the running backs get a B plus. I don't know if I stated that already. But as for the quarterback position, the quarterback, Blake Bortles, gets an F. Though he was pressured all day long, he can't make throws more than 15 yards down the field. He was inconsistent. He could not throw an accurate pass. He didn't run when he should have ran. You know, there's a lot of things Blake Bortles did wrong in this game. And I see a lot of people on the internet, a lot of people on Twitter saying, you can't blame Blake Bortles for this loss, the offensive line, uh, with the pressure is the face. Yes, I agree with that, but you totally can blame it on Blake Bortles. Because if, <clears throat> if this coaching staff had a quarterback that they trust, we'd win this game. Because we go out there, we don't go out and do the, you know, the shit that you see in Madden when you play the computer. First down, run. Second down, run. Third down, run. You know, punt. But they don't trust Blake Bortles, and I don't. I'd be lying to you if I could say I could find a lot of people that are Jaguar fans that trust Blake Bortles. Not a lot of people trust Blake Bortles, and now it's even crazier that we extended Blake Bortles to be our quarterback uh, for next season as well. So our quarterback gets an F, and the Jags aren't going to be winning any game soon if they don't address the quarterback position. Now the offense's overall grade, I am going to be giving them a C plus because I think they went out there and they had a solid first half of play with the running backs, uh, the tight ends, and the offensive line as well as far as the run blocking goes in the first half. I think that's enough for them to get a C plus, but the second half collapse is definitely warranted to knock that grade down a couple of notches. Um, if there was not a collapse, I definitely would have gave this offense a B plus. Uh, regardless of how bad they did in the second half, this has been the best offensive performance from the Jags since, you know, we played the Jets in week <clears throat> week four, I believe. So, that's a, that's a positive. You know, there's some positive to be taken away from this game. Not a whole lot, but that is definitely um, one of them. So, the quarterback, I mean, the offense as a whole 
gets a C plus from me. Now let's dive into the defense. Man, the defense gave up a lot in the second half. Um, there's not a lot to be said as far as that goes. But as far as the defensive line goes, I'm going to be giving them a B plus. I think overall this was the best game they've played in a long, long time. Calais Camel, Yannick Ngakwe both got a sack. Uh, Avery Jones has been playing out of his mind recently. Um, he's been a good piece of the Jaguar puzzle as well. Uh, guys like... Uh, Marcel Darius as well. <clears throat> he had a good game. So, you know, guys are going out there making impacts and doing things well uh, on the defensive line. And also the run game, man. That shit was just not even available uh, for James Conner. James Conner only got, I believe, 35 yards rushing. That's one thing this Jaguars defense has been consistent with all season long is their defense against the run. And it's been beautiful to see, and it's been beautiful to see that kind of development uh, for this Jaguars defense. Last year, that was the big Achilles heel was against the run. If there was something that the Jaguars weren't very good at in uh, 2018, it was going up against the run game. So this defensive line definitely improving that, and that's why they're going to be getting a B-plus rating uh, from me. Now, as far as the linebackers go, the most inconsistent group on the Jaguars uh, so far this season Telvin Smith, man, he almost let up a 30-yard touchdown pass to James Conner on a wheel, but he dropped it. Uh, he allowed the Vance McDonald touchdown. There's just Telvin Smith, man. There's a lot wrong with him right now that I have no idea what happened, what the drop-off was from last last year to this year. But there's been one, you know, and that's obvious. So uh, this linebacking core as a whole gets a D-plus from me. Um, when they were in their zones, they were playing bad. Uh, they didn't do necessarily anything explosive in the run game. So I think a D-plus for those linebackers, again, is way more than fair on my end. Now, finally, we're going to be talking about the secondary. And the secondary as a whole gets an A from me. Jalen Ramsey, that was one of his best games he's ever played. And that's why it's such a damn shame we went out there and lost that game. Had two interceptions, one of them being one of the most athletic interceptions I've ever seen. Aside from last year, a lot of people are talking about this Jalen Ramsey pick being this you know thing of athleticism. But I don't think you guys remember the A.J. Boye interception he had a... Uh, against the Ravens in London, you know, the one where he tipped up to himself. Uh, that one was beautiful as well, I think, more athletic than this Jalen Ramsey interception. But Jalen Ramsey went out there in the first half, didn't allow Antonio Brown to get a single catch. Um, <clears throat> and then when he finally did, what defense do you think we were running? Yep, that's right, we were running zone defense. What a surprise that Jalen Ramsey let that happen on his own defense. Again, not his fault. It wasn't his zone. Miscommunication on the defense, something that we are all too accustomed of seeing this season. A.J. Boye also had a good game. Um, D.J. Hayden as well. All the corners had a good game. The safeties as well. Barry Church kind of stepped up, had a rebound game. Um, you know, on second thought, I'm going to be giving the secondary an A. I think they went out there and they did their job well against... Uh, Probably the best passing offense in the league as far as weapons go. They went out there, handled business, covered all their weapons. Juju Smith-Schuster with AJ. Uh, Jalen was on him a couple of times. And then same thing with AB and Jalen, AB and AJ. They went out there and they covered those two targets and they did an exceptionally well job. Now as far as the defense's overall grade goes, I'm going to be giving them an A and B+. Plus. Because those linebackers. But I think this is, again, one of the best defensive performances I've ever seen. If it wasn't for stupid, 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 stupid penalties, um, this Jaguar team wins the game. Um, uh, and a lot of points on that Pittsburgh final drive. They did allow uh, Big Ben to get that rushing touchdown towards the end of the game. But like I said, you can't take too much away from this defense because they were able to go out there do their job, and do things exceptionally well on the defensive side of the ball. There is a lot of things to be taken positively on this game, but the coaching and the penalties really, really takes away from the overall fact that this was a pretty good game as a whole for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now it is time for my favorite time of the week, your favorite time of the week, and everybody's favorite time of the week. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about players 
of the week. And on special teams, we're going to be giving it to the birthday boy, Josh Lambeau. Like I said, Josh Lambeau, probably the best player the Jaguars currently have. He goes out there. He's consistent. He's an everyday thing. He's fun to watch as a kicker. You know, nice guy. Definitely deserving of special teams player of the week. Uh, he's won it quite a bit this season. I don't think there's a, a lot stopping him from becoming special teams player of the year. Now, as far as the offense goes, we're going to be giving it to Leonard Fournette again this week. He went out there, had over 100 uh, all-purpose yards, did his job, did his thing, and really, really helps out our offense when he's out there. If we had a quarterback that could actually throw down the field, it would help out exceptionally more, but, you know, you get what you draw, and that's what we drew. So, um, Leonard Fournette becoming in as the offensive player of the week. Now, as far as Defensive Player of the Week goes, I think there's no question who that should be. That's the boy himself, Jalen Ramsey. I think this is Jalen Ramsey's first Defensive Player uh, of the Week award. He had two interceptions, one extremely athletic interception, and one that he just jumped beautifully, a beautifully played ball. There's no way this Jaguar team trades that franchise player. And that was my Jaguars versus Steelers position grades and players of the week. What would you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to check the links down below as well. Don't forget to like me on Facebook at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Trevin Pixley and follow me on Instagram at Trayvon Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, go ahead, click that subscribe button, click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new Jaguar content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody outworking me. Them are just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great day.